Hey guys, Jeff Dish, your real estate broker with the Disher Group at Douglas Elliman. And uh, today I wanna talk about why listing your home too high may be detrimental. And when I say detrimental, I mean detrimental to you getting the most money for your home in the quickest time with less stress. So the reason I wanna talk about this is because nine times out of 10, if not even more, when I show up to take a listing or I show up to a listing an appointment and I meet with the owners, first thing I typically ask after we do a walk around intro is I ask them, so, what do you think your home is worth? And I do this before I tell them what I think it's worth, before we start jumping into comps, condition, anything, I ask them, I say, hey, what do you think your home is worth? And nine times out of 10, they, think, they always think it's worth more than it actually is. And I just wanna hear it, I wanna kinda gauge um, and see how far uh, more than it's actually worth than they think it is. So, and again, this isn't wrong. Everyone does it. I even do it. I'm a real estate broker. I've been doing this for what, over 16 years. I still think today my condo is worth more than it actually is. Um, and the reason being is because it's ours. We always, there's an there's a ownership bias that goes along with owning your own spot and thinking it's worth more. We give an emotional value to um, the tile that we put in, the colors we chose for the walls, the remodel we did, whatever it may be, we always think that our house is better than our neighbors. It's better than everything in the neighborhood. Um, so the reason that overpricing your home could be detrimental is because when we price a home, what happens is you have a, um, uh, you have a pool of buyers that are all looking within that range. So say you list a home for 500,000 and just say it's only worth 460. What's going to happen when you list it for 500 is everyone in that pool of buyers at 500 is going to pull that property up or see your listing and they're going to go, wow. Okay. So for everything else I've been looking at at 500, this doesn't add up and they won't even look at your property. They'll, they'll literally look at all the other ones that are worth 500 and they'll compare it and go, wow, this house, no, this is overpriced. They'll literally think it's overpriced. They won't even look at it. And so what happens from a listing standpoint, uh, a broker, listing broker standpoint is we don't get any showings. And there's a NAR said, and, and again, <clears throat> I hope I'm correct here, but they said for every 10 days you're on the market, you should get at least eight showings. And if you get eight showings and you don't get one offer, you're overpriced. If you don't get eight showings, you're overpriced. So what happens is we put a property on, if the owners wanna list it high, we list it high for them, we talk them out, we show them all the comps, we do our best and due diligence to get them to list what we, uh, with our professional um, opinion. If they don't, we list it, we let it sit, and what typically happens is the longer a property sits, the lower the offers come in. And this is, this is a fact. If you, if you talk to other brokers, if you talk to anyone, if you look at history, the first offer, the first offer that comes in is typically the best, the first one. And it makes sense because when I'm working with buyers, when they see long market time, they think something's wrong with the house. They think that they can get a deal. So usually when a house has been on the market for two weeks, it's not gonna get a full price offer. No, it's not. It's not gonna get a full price offer. It's gonna get something low. And that's why I tell my sellers, it's better to list low and create a bidding war than to list high and let it sit and become stale because what happens in the MLS, you can hit the history button and I can pull up your property and see how long it's been sitting, see what you've listed it for. I do it all the time when I see properties been on for four months, two months, and they're just, you can see constant slow drop in price. They're getting desperate. They realize they've overpriced. And what happens emotionally from a seller standpoint, they start getting emotional anxiety and they start wondering if their house is gonna sell. They've already pictured themselves moving on. They're probably looking at other places. They may have to relocate and they're in a time crunch. So again, if it comes to listing your property and it comes to price, whether it's with myself or another brokerage or another team, it's always better to price aggressively on the low side than on the high side. I'd rather have people bidding on your home than letting it sit. If you have any questions, you know where to find me, Jeff Disher, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, listen to my podcast. I give a ton of valuable information all for free and I wanna make sure you are equipped with the tools and information necessary that you need to buy or sell your home. Talk to you guys soon, take care.